check this out. I bought this on Amazon the other day. It was $1,075 after taxes. This is a Makita 80cc saw, 79cc. It's the EA7900P. What a dumb name. Why do people name saws like this? Why can't they name it something catchy like the Crazy Cutter or something like Timber Beast or just anything? But I mean, I'm not even going to remember that. Anyways, this is a... This is a really interesting saw, and I'm looking forward to trying it. It's a thousand dollars. It's almost 80 cc, so it's actually the same, about the same size as a 500i, 14.7 pounds, I believe, and the 500i is 13.6, I think. So it's about a pound heavier and carbureted, obviously. It's basically just steel, makes bars that don't go on the other saws, but you can put Husqvarna bars on just about anything. Um, I don't have a Husky 32, which I'd like, but I do have a 36. This is a lot of teeth. This is a full comp. 36 inch chain, but we're gonna try this ADCC saw out. I'm gonna pack it down in the hole. It's a little bit of a walk and just gonna kind of just cutting timber today. Just, you know, harvesting timber out here, logging, and we're just gonna see how this thing cuts. I'm really looking forward to trying this out. It's a big saw, but it actually doesn't feel that heavy, honestly. So let's check it out. It's pretty ugly, so if a guy just cuts the swell and cuts it at the crotch, then the machine can pull the rest up. Got it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So on a big one like this, what size would you want out of it? Would you want like a 33 or would you want me to just go longer the better? Uh, so the 33, 31.3s. Yeah. The 31.3s are with a lot of rot or a lot of those swell. Yeah. So I just tape out a pull out of that one because you look down it. It looks super nice. It's really nice. Yeah. So even if you make it longer than 95, like just get it out there and we can always handle it in the landing. Okay. <laughs> if I can move it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
this western red cedar hardly any taper it's a beautiful tree What if I like maybe do one of these? So that, like, well, no. What I think it is is it's deceiving because you think it's this big, and we're missing that back corner. Oh, is there? I think that's what it really comes down to. So if you wouldn't mind, just get this guy out of our way, and then put yeah. this thing right here clean. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> 
Nice. ignore that rot that? like add five feet to the length of the log no, or no. buck five feet off buck five feet off and see if it clears up you can kind of tell by the, the okay the change on this side. <laughs> so you see that would have been a wedge or had you just face it up that way or to sat back. Right, right. That's crazy. So the little ones give you a lot of forgiveness, but you saw how when you're cutting slow, you saw it bounce and stopped. Yeah. So when that happens, it'll roll back on you and then you're I see what you're saying. So you got to cut real So quickly. consistent. Consistent pretty fast and you watch it and then if it starts rolling back you need to rip out quick it's so crazy it's just but that so, little little tiny bit of wood like yeah so ideally wow. so your size will come in just a little bit further because it didn't really hinge up to that yeah you know what i mean like you can bore it in just a hair bit okay and then as you come around you had out here so that's the reason it wasn't walking too is because this is all your wood you already cut yeah. through your far side right so you already walked as far as you could, but this was holding it from going any further. Interesting. So that's why it's important to have your dogs doing the work one. So like you whip, rip out your face, you come around until you feel behind and you just whip around and then your dogs are in that same place. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So, so then you have like, like a triangle of wood. Right. It's so like more, if yeah. you get that momentum really going, right. you can nip it off at the last second and get it to jump even because you can okay. get that much momentum built up. Yeah. Like with the tall gangly fur, like the big stuff, you can do it to where the top will walk around like 50 feet. Wow. And it, it walks around like a, yeah, it's pretty wild, pretty neat. But if you misjudge it a bit, you're in a, you're having a really bad day. Right. But it went sideways. No, it went right where we were anticipating. <laughs> That's cool. So like knowing that that hinge, because if you had, if that was a fur, it would like go up here where you had it faced. But that hinge breaks off really on. Seasons, right, so right. Judging it out. Right. Because we've been playing stronger. with the stand for a little bit. So we kind of know how it's reacting now. Right. And then you know kind of what your tolerances are. Yeah. That's how you can get away. Like if you're throwing a face, you spend a lot of times the guys will spend a lot of time making everything really nice, which is important. What what have you, mm -hmm. especially 
guys that are first learning getting everything right but if you know you have a slight dutchman on that far side you know you have a 15 degree window to keep in lay mm -hmm. you aim a little bit to the high side or you throw a uh, face in there Mm -hmm. then no matter how it comes up you're just doing that one cut and by the end of the day that's like 20 more trees right right if you just find that rhythm yeah i see what you're saying cool i'll bug this guy out and then we'll go walk up there and get a game plan going for that next change okay the other guy's gonna do, you to want stay. to just tree length this one or do anything with that yeah if you want to take the ugly long butt off okay and then we'll leave the rest i'll skinny it out with the machine all right sounds good that's a patch that we're harvesting and then like over here is a patch we're harvesting so can't really go over here can't really go over there everything's got to start getting shot through that hole <laughs>
Holy smokes, that was a big tree. A little lumpy in the middle on the hinge, but I got a little Dutchman in there. I don't know, that was a pretty big tree. It's down. I don't think anything broke, so I'm pretty happy. <laughs> oh, Makita gets after it, man. One 33 foot log off the butt, and then one 95 pole off the top. I don't know if they can get out of the tip. That's a nice tree, man. And it didn't break. I'm pretty happy with that one too. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Oh wait, did that break? <laughs> oh man, I broke it on this big one. Dang it. Sometimes it's like, oh man, look, the stump looks good and then you, you broke a log. So it's like, it's always something that can go wrong. It's hard to get everything to go perfect. About quitting time, just gonna drop just a few more little guys for good measure and then we're out of here.
that's it for today. All right, well, all the daylight is wet. We opened up in these two days. Pretty wild. This was like really crowded in here when we showed up, but it's starting to open up. All right, hey everybody, just realized, yeah, I'd never gave my final thoughts on the saw. Yeah, the, um, that was a few weeks ago. Uh, anyways, so that Makita, I gotta say, I think I like it. I, you know, I had to mess with the carburetor quite a bit. I think I'm gonna tweak with it a little more. Probably have Gordy help me really dial it in. So uh, it's been like, it's been a few weeks since I filmed that. And since then uh, I used Gordy, he has the same saw, but it's been poured and built by Redbeard Saws, Nick Stockel in Minnesota. And I ran Gordy's and it was like, really really nice it's in my uh i have a review coming up where i it's a chainsaw chainsaw it just says chainsaw on it and i cut down this tree and i used gordy's big saw his big makita for the trunk wood of it it's freaking awesome um and even the one i was using is all stock and it was great that the whole carbureted thing i gotta say i'm a big fan of the mtronic and the x-torque stuff the the automatic tuning you know it's like you know it's it's been enough time it's been like 10 years where the, these auto tune saws have just been the, the technology has just gotten so good. You just, a carburetor, you just can't compete with it. You know, it's, you never have to even think about it. So I had to tweak with that saw a bit while I was out there in the woods cutting. And I think I got to dial in a little more, but it's pretty good. I got to say, I like the saw. I mean, it's an 80 cc saw, it's a thousand dollars. The still 500i is also a thousand dollars. I mean, it's also 80 cc's, but it's $1,500 if you can find one, you know. Uh, it's auto tune and it's fuel injected, of course. The the 500i is just like the bee's knees. It's awesome. But I mean that Makita, I mean come on, that's it's a it's a great deal. Honestly, I was really skeptical about that saw. I thought I did great. I mean some of those trees were big that I was cutting out there. You know, like that cedar at the end of the day, that was a big tree, and the Makita was just chowing through it all. So I like the Makita. I thought it was great. I don't know if I'll keep it forever because. I just like already have, you know, my other saws, I've had a lot of work done to them. They're all like pimped out and stuff. That one's stock, you know, so I don't like it as much as my other saws, but that's just because I've modified the other ones so much. So <laughs> anyways, this is just a long winded way of me saying to wrap this video up. I like the Makita. I thought it was awesome. It really uh, went beyond my expectations. I thought it was great. I like it. I would recommend for a thousand bucks. I mean, it's all at the end of the day, it's all about the price, right? I mean, if the price is good, then the saw is good, in my opinion. That's what you're really looking at. So is it good? Bang for the buck? I think it's a good bang for the buck. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys later.